Hi, welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to show you how to estimate uh, asymmetric time series ARDL model uh, using recent EVUs versions, EVUs 13 or EVUs 14. In these recent EVUs, the, uh, the asymmetric effect functions are, are built in. So here we will show you some of the features that are uh, added in these new versions. So I will start with selection of my variables, dependent variable first and the independent variables. This is the time series data of 350 time observations. Uh, how I added time observation because my data might be uh, based on the irregular dates like it will be five days a week or there are holidays in between. That's why the serial numbers are used rather than the date. So, so that the, the confusion uh, is sorted and the, in the back end, the date data is already there. So I will open, open as an equation and we'll go in. Ideally, you should run first simple OLS to have a look if there is some string data or some missing values, it will know here. So my whole data was, uh, what do you call it? My whole data was 350 observations and the estimation results are also 350 so it means uh, the results there is no missing observation so i will name it so that even if you should name the results so that uh, because of any reason if the eus crashes it will store the results and ideally when you name it you also save it so that your specification results are also saved now what i will do i will zoom it in now i will go with estimate and estimate the ideal model. Now there are uh, three three types of asymmetry: only short run, only long run, and both. Now technically, you should know theoretically which variable you want to use as asymmetry. So what I will do, I will pick up all of them and add as both long run and short run asymmetry. If your data is big enough, you can go with four lag orders. Otherwise, you should reduce it. And when I run it, it will take some time and it will show the results here. So it has estimated asymmetry for all variables. This is CUMDP means positive and DN is negative. So this is the asymmetry of IBR variable. This is the uh, asymmetry of lag of BSR variable. And this is the BSR variable up and down. This is BBR variable. So lag order is one zero one zero. So first of all, we have to look if the asymmetry exists or not. So we go here and go in asymmetry test. You notice that for the BBR, both long run asymmetry exists. Okay. And short run, uh, the, the BBR, the long run exists as 10%. For BSR, long run exists uh, at 1%. And for BIBR, long run exists at 5%. So if you go down, it will only show the uh, test for 1%. So BSR does not exist in short run but VSR exists uh, both in long run. So if you wanted to simplify, you can reduce the BBR and IBR for long run only. So what I do is I will go here and remove the IBR and BBR and I will add it here, IBR and BBR. So it will simplify the model. And, and it may also improve the results. So the estimates are here. Now we have to look if there is improvement in the symmetry test. You can notice that BSR is both. BSR is not in short run, but both exist, so we cannot drop the short run. And they are, see, you can notice that it was in significant at 10%. Now it is at 5%. It has improved. So this way you can, and this is at 1%. If it was lower than 1%, we could have added it, checked it again, only remove, uh, keeping BBR in the long run only. Now, we, since we have confirmed the, the specification of asymmetry, we go towards uh, checking if there is long run exist, long run relation. So the co-integration. So in the bound test, the value is 32.009, which is above then this critical value, which means there is a long run relation. Now, before looking at the long run and short run results, we should make sure that the model is fit and it's reliable. We go with the residual test. And we go with, first of all, histogram. So it is significant, it means there is some outliers in the data. So it's up to you if you want to sort it out. If you if if by taking a log it can be sorted, 
then you should try otherwise central limit theorem suggests that if the sample is above 30 you can ignore and the non-normality because the data is normal asymmetrically is um, asymptotically because of central limit theorem because ideally uh, if if the reason for these outliers are known it should be sorted then then we go for next test that is serial autocorrelation and it is insignificant at lag 2 it means there is no autocorrelation you can yeah, why lag 2? Because the model we used was hair was using up to lag 2. So we should actually see more than 2 lags, more than 2 and more than 2, but at 2 there is no autocorrelation. So then we go with the heteroskedasticity test. So there are many types. So you can start with the first one and it is significant means there is heteroscedasticity and this might be because of the presence of outliers that we seen in the um, histogram and how to sort it out the ideal way is take log of all the variables it might reduce the chances uh, of heteroscedasticity so we will have a look at it later on then we we'll go for the reset test so it is also significant means there is non-linearity. Mm, technically, if if your model is asymmetric and it's non-linearity issue, mm, it could be sorted by sorting the heteroscedasticity by taking log. But if it is still there, then it means some of the variables are present in a quadratic formation. You, and and if if that variable is also asymmetric, this will be a challenging issue. For that, uh, ideally, the solution can be add some other control variables which is not asymmetric and add its square form. Maybe that can sort it out. Otherwise, uh, most of the cases when you are addressing the heteroscedasticity using log, this problem is also sorted out. Now we go for the ability test in the QSM. We go for QSM test it is within the red lines it means the mean value of the coefficients is stable we go again and look for schism scare and this is going out so here and here it means there is instability okay so we have noted down three problems so what we'll do i will minimize it and in order to sort it i will first of all start with this structural break issue so i will go here as quick and uh, we'll go with object, new object, and add uh, and go with the dependent variable which was PBR, PBR, and C. So I will run the regression with intercept only and name it PN2 and then go for estimation of its structural break. So we'll go in the stability diagnostic, multiple breakpoint test, and it's okay. So it is saying that there are two breaks one at 107 observation and one at 266. So what we do, should do is I will I will open up a new empty series and it should be called a dummy variable and it should be zero up till up till 107. So it will take some time for to do it. You can note here as uh, till 106 I added zeros and from 107 I added one. You can do it in Excel with a formula and it will be done quickly. If you know the coding in eBuse, you can write a command here and do it quickly. But I'm uh, in order to show those who don't know coding, I'm doing it manually. So here I've added ones. I will close this and there will be you see uh, there's a new variable here. Now I will go in estimates again and add the dumb variable here ideally it should be here as fixed regressors because we are assuming that the structural break does not affect with lags it's a one-time event and it has an instantaneous effect but does not have a lag effect if you are to assume that it can have a lag effect you should add it here okay i will run it again it will take some time close this estimates and zoom it in now we should have a look at um, the bound test again so it is significant and we go with the stability test first QSM scare it is still outside means uh, the, the 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 second dummy variable should also be added but if you go in the 
that was elasticity test. It is still, and the problem is still there. If you look at the test, it is still there. So it means uh, the way I added the dummy variable, you can add the second one. So, but I will also try to add the dummy variable this way. So it will, the note, you will notice the difference is that there will be lags of the dummy variables. Sometimes if you use this method, what will happen is it might lead to it might the software might not run because it might have a multicollinearity effect if there are more than one dummy in the model. Okay, so since I've added it, we'll go and check the ism square. Still, it has it has improved, but still there's some problem. So it means the second dummy variable should be added. So what I will do here is, as an example, we'll go with looking at the other results. So this is the integration relation. This is the long run results. Okay. So you will notice that there are peaks here. This is the reason the model has creating problems. So in the long run, you can see that BSR uh, has a significant effect and both are significant at 10%. And these coefficients are not same, which means there is asymmetry. IBR, both are significant. BPR, not significant. So we can, uh, if you can notice here is that it is not significant in the long run. So what we, we, we can do is that estimate and we use, uh, we, use B, we remove the BPR from here and add it to, to first of all, add to because it's, it was all, only long run and it is not significant, we remove it and add it as a simple variable. So we'll run the RDL model again. Take some time, you can see in the bottom. The, the new version shows the process, how much time it will take. So now we go back and see for the asymmetry test. It is significant here. BSR is not significant in the short run, but it is significant in both. We have to keep it. So we go with the bound test, it is significant. We go with the stability, maybe it has improved. It is still there, a little bit increased. We go with the other problems of heteroscedasticity, it is still there. We go with the integration relation. So, it is, uh, so that the variable we remove from asymmetry is still insignificant in the long run. So it's up to the theory if you want to keep it or if you want to remove it. Since we noticed that there was uh, non-linearity, so what we can do is we can check for the presence of quadratic effect. So we added a square form. So when I estimate again, it will take some time because the more variables you add, the more combination it can make and more time it will take to estimate. So you can see the estimation results. Sometimes it hangs and it takes time. So there's the square form here. We'll look for the asymmetry test again. We'll do it quickly now. So there is a significant. We'll look for the integration and it is significant. We'll look for the prism square. It is still there. It requires the second dummy variable. On linearity still there maybe because not because of this variable how we can check we can check if the long run results it is significant none of them are significant because so this problem is not because of that now we'll move forward because i've already discussed several solutions here you need here you can also check if if it log taking a log is required here from the results it uh, the coefficients are similar it means if you need to take a log, you have to take log to all the variables, not specifically any one of them. So next is, if you want to know why I got this, for that there's a video in the channel that's talking about when to take a log and how to decide which variable should be logged. Now we go for the short run. For that we go in correction results. You can go down and see the this coefficient it is negative and significant it means there is convergence and since this but but the model is heteroscedastic and there is misspecification and it, it's standard uh, the standard error of the coefficients are sensitive to outliers so these three problems need to be sorted so this is the short run estimates 
okay only bsr was there in the short run now next is when you have done all of these you can go in detail your next step was that you can talk about the dynamic multiplier graph so you need to go for 15 lakhs you can go for dynamic multiplier or shock both of them explain different things so when i go for this it will take time because there are there are three two variables which are asymmetric and one of them is on both short run and long run and one is only long run so it will do it three times it is processing here so for the case of dummy variable since there was no asymmetry it will have a similar effect so it is saying that if the for this variable and the at the first lag there will be a this much effect and then it will damp down and till fifth lag this will affect will become zero and for bpr it's similar it starts with negative and then it starts with this number and then reaches to this and then balances down to this number for square form it, it starts with this and reduces to this number in the lag one and the lag two and the lag three and the lag four to five it balances to stabilizes to this number so for the case of bsr and you can see it here so this is the long run so you can notice here is the red line is the net result it is the difference between this negative asymmetry and positive asymmetry okay so there are, there is because this variable was present in both long run and short run so there are two so this is overall and this is the long run so you can notice here is that there was asymmetry effect little bit uh, it is insignificant at the start but the asymmetry starts from the lag 3 and onwards so because the its upper and lower limit are not covering the zero so it will be there for the IBR there is an uh, for you can see it here that the asymmetry increases and it stays forever so these are the results for asymmetric effects i hope you understood how to manage the asymmetric ardl model in your ee views so i hope you will be able to uh, find interesting results using your e views and your time series data thank you